Alright. Hello everyone. Um, welcome to my talk today. My name is Pramis Kalamuti, but you can see the call me Pram. Um, first of all, thanks to all of you who come today. Thanks to the Good Company for having me here. I'm really excited today because we finally can uh, show what we've been doing last year with the reference UI from the Good Analyst. A good introduction about myself. I, I work uh, for Luxoft Automotive in the office. Um, I work several years um, in the HMI domain, in several industrial um, um, projects in automotive, and I did the um, reference UI from the Good Analyst. So the highlights of uh, my current talks today is that an MT3 is there to provide the best practices and reference for the automotive user interface by uh, doing and having our new UI architecture that will enable the developers to work independently. That this will also increase the productivities while the complexities arise. We all the window management and compositors in Atom3 and the capabilities of a uh, Cube Application Manager that allows us to own the applications within the UI and help us also to have a multi process UI. And I will also probably show um, some Cupid controls to style live in action. But you can probably also see um, in our booth downstairs, it's also running there, and some integrations uh, like identification and settings and Cube uh, 3D integrations. So what is Cube Analytics? It's a, it's a actually a, a code based solution for us to create a stunning and multi-process user interface that has some several components such as Cube Application Manager, Cube API, the reference UI itself, Cube Live Camera and Cube Creator plugin. It is initially uh, started um, by Luxoft or used to be uh, Blagicor before it was acquired by Luxoft and then uh, get up and a Cube company. So this is the evolution of uh, the Neptune UI. Uh, we have this um, simple design as the first Neptune UI, and then you, probably some of you already saw this before. The Neptune 2 UI, we showed this uh, last year in our booth. And then this is our new look, the Neptune 3 UI, um, that has a lot of improvements, not only as a demo uh, UI, but also as a clear uh, reference um, in the code base itself. <coughs> so, so Cube, um, Net Neptune 3 UI builds on top of Cube Application Manager that uh, also uh, uses some features from the Cube API and we separated the UI into system UI and the applications. So the system UI is the one who manages the window management, compositing all the, win the application windows and have these uh, UI settings and controls and some system you know, monitors. And these are uh, the listed applications, a uh, pre-built application we have, um, such as music, uh, 3D integration as the vehicle application, map application, we use Mapbox integration in the uh, cute location there, and um, some other application like climate application in the cluster. And we also um, have some UI components um, from the cube itself, like the cube quick controls to styling, and yeah, some primitive uh, controls there. Um, we also provide a deployment server somewhere in the cloud. So um, this provides the, the applications uh, online so that it can be downloaded by the Neptune 3 UI and then be installed there um, by the Cube Application Manager. And it will run um, using all the, the windows available there, like any other uh, building applications. And then another thing we have is the remote settings. Um, so we also provide a remote setting server, which holds some states, like um, yeah, settings, the, the theme, what is the current theme, the languages, and so on. And then you can control these um, settings using any other device, like we have done there, um, the Android remote control applications to control the, um, the Neptune tree UI by connecting to the server, and then the UI will react right away. Um, by following the stage engines by the remote control applications. 
And then these are some key challenges while uh, developing the UI. In a large scale UI project, it is really easy that the productivity is being killed by the complexities that the UI developers are then touched by some services out there, uh, down there, then um, you you cannot really, uh, as a UI developer, I mean, me myself, I feel it myself that it, as a UI developer, it's really, really difficult when you are tied to some other services backend. Um, for example, if you work with the climate, and then some people who are working on the climate doing some API changes, then the UI should also somehow be changed to follow the, the API that is being changed on the on, on the backend side. So, and when the UI is not uh, decomposable and being tied like this, then you start feeling that frustrating. This is really frustrating. You have to wait for some people to finish their work. Then um, you start feeling, yeah not productive at all. And then, this is the, the architecture that we want to show. So we, we decompose the UI parts into several parts. Um, the application shell is the one that creates the application window. We have a store that encapsulates only the access um, to the surface. And then the view is the one that uh, um, um, delegating the stores, the data from the stores to any other um, UI parts like panels, controls, um, and then so panels basically is the container of other panels, other other panels or um, the controls. And then control is basically like if you need to have some special controls like I don't know eclipse um, shapes of buttons or so. Then yeah, and then we have another one is the helper as a collection of operations like if you need to have some functions to access your local assets and so on. So the application shell it looks like this. Um, this is what um, we have in the center console. So in Neptune, we provide such a specific rectangle for the applications to show its content. And then the view will just get these values from the window. So we provide this application window. I will uh, talk about this later. And then the view is controlling, um, uh, sorry, creating the stars and start delegating the values. So the stores, as I said before, it's the one that encapsulates uh, the, the access or the dependencies to the, to, the, to the services. And then you start thinking about um, um, the, the possibilities to start doing some testing or make the store being testable. Then you need an interface so that you can use the store also later for um, development. So we started with this interface that um, have those APIs and then you have the real store afterwards that fill those APIs with the values from the services. Like for here, as I show here, um, you can see that we start creating the music player, the libraries and so on from your uh, media backend, importing there and then um, store those business logics inside the store. And then the view, as um, in Atom 3 we have the widgets and then the maximized view. So we separated between the widget panels and the maximized panel. But this is really depending on uh, how you design your user interface. And you, you see that um, those panels receiving the, the stores, the data uh, from the view. And then go down, downwards, uh, there is the panels. So inside the panels, so I took this example of a music application. Inside the panels, you have those um, but, uh, upper part as the current song panels. And then the bottom part is the music list panel. And the current song panel, as you can see there, since it doesn't really um, care about what are the least of the musics we have, it only cares about the current song, so you can start. Um, you can see that we start sorting the store over there. Like here, as you can see, uh, the current album artwork can easily get the data directly from the store, and also like the title and artist name. And 
as well as for the music playlist, you can simply get the playlist model uh, from the store right away. Later, um, you can test these components uh, separately and independently. And then go down again inside under the panel. In the panel, in the, in the current song panel, we have a container of um, controls, like the album artwork, the music title, and then those buttons. So this is, again, becoming more simple and simple. And then uh, we reach the UI harnesses, where it is actually a technique to isolate part of the UI, and it allows the developer to test every single part of the UI independently. So we come into the interesting part now. I'm gonna do a live coding here to show what I'm looking for. So I hope you can see my code. I have prepared here. Uh, so what I'm going to show here is the cluster. I've prepared here the um, dial speed harness of the cluster. So we have two cages um, in the cluster. I have prepared a wrapper that will run the QMLI. This is also one of our um, components from QMLI suits. So as I already decompose those UI components, I can start playing around uh, with each component. So now I will just give some backgrounds so you can see right away. So QMLF is a tool to do some uh, live reloading, doing the flow. I'm using this quite a lot uh, for such a UI project. And then you can so I'm going to take the dial speed. <coughs> take the stairs because I need the sound state, so I will just take the normal one. Then you can directly see this component without even running the whole UI. And then, because I have some um, properties inside the dial speed panel, like speed, for example. I can just see doing developing this if uh, my needle, for example, really pointing the correct value or not. And then um, also having the speed limit there. Let's take 50. So having this, you can also imagine that um, you can have some simulation back end that simulate the data and then see it lies. So for this presentation, I just prepared some so just for a timer. Beautiful. And then this um, can already we can already see that the oh sorry the ID. Yes. Yeah. So we can see directly that the cluster will be alive without even um, the need to run the whole cluster. And then you can start thinking about improving the code. For example, um, go to the, the panel and then let's say you want to choose the speed color to be red when the speed is higher than speed limit. Red. It's probably better to make it fast. So you can directly see um, the updates of your code in the cluster itself. And this can also um, allows the designer to see it next to the developer right away and doing this code. Um, separately, isolatedly, without being care about the other team in your uh, project that is um, working with the cluster backend, for example. And then, if you want to start running the whole cluster,
you can see them bronze and iron use um, the full UI as well, the Neptune 3 UI as a complete UI, but the cluster can run as it is. And then, as I mentioned before, that we have the system UI that um, depends on the application manager. This is the, the, the system, the, the UI that um, manages the windows. So we use the Qt um, VLAN, so Qt application manager uses the Qt VLAN backend to, uh, to be able to manage um, those applications windows that run separately and um, compose it in the right place, like for example in the widgets, or this guy should be shown in the cluster, and so on. And the application show up as a plain QR items in specified window. Oh, yeah. So the system UI start the applications, and those applications will start um, producing info in the Wayland surface, and then the system UI will uh, get this and then show it in, in, in the system UI. So this is the wireframe of the Neptune tree. Um, in the center console, you have the application CC window and application IC window. So CC uh, stands for the center console and IC stands for the instant cluster. So the application has the um, possibility to choose where, uh, where its content should be shown at. So you can have an application that can only be shown in the same console only, or can be shown in the same console and in the instrument cluster. Like, um, probably some of you already saw that uh, in our booth that we have the music application and navigation application that is being shown in both uh, windows, um, running, um, yeah, showing in a different uh, screen. And also, we have the button bar window um, that is currently uh, occupied by the climate application. And also one other um, screen or window for the head-up display. So those applications basically run in separate processes, but you can have uh, you know choose which uh, screens you want to show, be shown. So um, in Atom, we provide the um, application window be, to be used by the applications, and then the system UI will catch this uh, application window and show it in the application window item. This is uh, a QMO component that is provided by the Qt application manager um, to show the content from application. And since uh, Neptune has some um, required properties like scaling, accent color, and the uh, theme, so yeah, those properties being um, somehow embedded to the Neptune window itself and then the application CC window can already use those and I mean between application CC window and IC windows. And what's next? Um, we have our current um, running project now in Neptune 3 to be able to support um, multiple styles. So we have uh, what you saw down there is the Neptune 3, uh, Neptune style, and we will also introduce uh, the Lucy style in uh, CS uh, 2019. I'm gonna show a little bit how it looks like. So those uh, two styles are basically the same um, code base, but they can choose between um, styles. So yeah, this is the center console, as you can see, this is currently the Neptune three styles, and inside uh, the Neptune style, we have already two, two themes, uh, the light and dark themes, that will change the whole um, thing of the UI. Um, we can also change the, the accent color and we can change also in any other windows we have. As you can see here as well, and even inside the application itself. And then 
I'm going to show the Lucy style. What I do here is just to load different configuration file, still with the same code. And then we have a different look already. <laughs> and next thing will be that um, the, the next release will be is planned to be released um, at the mid of uh, this month. So this will be uh, the automotive suits 5 to 12. Um, and we have uh, a lot of improvements compared to the previous one um, in Q5.11, I mean, in Epson. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and then to summarize the uh, presentation today, um, as you can see that Neptun 3 shows the capability of the automotive suit to create a multi-process. Um, user interface. It's not only um, in one for one platform, but it's a, it's a cross platform as well. I'm working normally with uh, my Mac and uh, my Linux machine, and some people also try it out um, with Windows. And you also have some work around on Android as well. And what you see down there is, is the one that runs uh, on Linux. Um, the clean UI architecture that we um, introduce here plays a big part of helping um, our development process to extend the user interface that our principles, our core principles allow leveraging the productivities even if uh, complexities arise. And the Neptune 3 also provides a scheme to scale the UI development without being care about uh, any other features development um, by other teams. And it shows the kit capabilities as well to support multi screen. As you saw downstairs, that we have uh, three screens down there. And also the multi styles that I showed before. And it's, uh, it's also uh, an adaptable UI that you can adapt to any designs. So, thank you.